सत्यकाम सर यू स्टार्ट सर It is indeed a matter of great pleasure for me to welcome you all to this international webinar, which is organized in the occasion of 23rd death anniversary of Jan Pit Ewardi, great Indian author, Dr. Birendra Kumar Bhattacharya. All of us know that uh, Lit Bhattacharya was an eminent Indian author of his own repute, and he began his writing poems and short stories. His writing poems and short stories. In his teens, and at 37, he won the Sahitya Academy Award. At 55, he won Gyan Pith Award. He became the vice president of the Sahitya Academy at 59, and、uh, president at 64. So this is the journey of his literary life as a literature and as a.、Uh, Literary organizer. He came from a remote village of Sam, and his journey from that remote remote village of Sam to Sahitya Academy it has tremendous. It, it, it is full of、uh, it is full of experiences. The experiences he, he gathered from that journey he has reflected through his literature. Today, the webinar is organized to give tribute to him on the occasion of his 23rd death anniversary, and we are happy to inform you that we have with us today the four reputed scholars from from India and abroad will speak on the life, works, and the relevant extensions of the works of Dr. Birendra Kumar Bhattacharya. Let us start the webinar with a recorded speech of Madam Benita Bhattacharya, the spouse of late Dr. Birendra Kumar Bhattacharya, who has offered her speech、uh, in a recorded mode, in a in a context of、uh, because because of the、uh, COVID-19 pandemic, we collected her recorded speech, and now we are going to start the program with her speech. Please. ये कट एंड पेस्ट कर रहे हैं ना प्लीज हर स्पीस प्लीज I welcome Professor Anura from Sri Lanka. He is just joining, and I think there is a technical problem in the uh, in uh, uh, playing the speech. Before playing the speech,、uh, let us offer a floral tribute to Lady Birendra Kumar Bhattacharya.、Uh, the tribute will be offered by the elder son of Dr. Birendra Kumar Bhattacharya and the trust of Dr. Uh, a trust which was constituted in the memory of Dr. Birendra Kumar Bhattacharya, that is Dr. Birendra Kumar Bhattacharya Memorial Trust.、Uh, secretary of that trust, Dr. Dipankar Bhattacharya. Good evening, Koya. Dr. Birendra Kumar Bhattacharya Smriti Dibos Bolakhe. Ekhon antar asio webinar. अभिनंदनोंदनोंद कामना 
অভিনয় সফল কামনারে বিনীত ভট্টাচার্য বীরেন্দ্র ভবন গুয়াহী সারি This was the voice of uh, Binita Bhattacharya Madam, the spouse of uh, late Birindu Kumar Bhattacharya. We are grateful to Binita Madam for her speech. May I now request Dr. Dipanka Bhattacharya, the Secretary of Birindu Kumar Bhattacharya Memorial Trust, to offer a floral tribute to Birindu Kumar Bhattacharya. Namaskar. Good afternoon, everybody. Today is uh, 6th August, 23rd date anniversary. of a legendary writer nanpi thevardi ex president sahitya academy dr birendra kumar bhattacharya and to commemorate this occasion birendra kumar bhattacharya memorial trust have organized with technical support from amtron this webinar on the life and works of dr birendra kumar bhattacharya and uh, hope you all will uh, this enjoy this webinar and uh, before welcoming you i just want to give on behalf of all of you a floral tribute to this uh, legendary writer respected professor nagin sekya so who is a prolific writer ex president sahitya sabha assam sahitya sabha and ex mp respected professor amar jyoti choudhury vice chancellor downtown university respected professor onur manatung director center of heritage studies university of kelania sri lanka respected dr k srinivas rao secretary sahitya academy respected professor sitagam barthaku department of asmis and chairperson center for studies in journalism and mass communication dibrugo university on behalf of the trust we would like to welcome you for your gracious presence on this occasion which would make this webinar very much livelier welcome you all sir and i also would like to welcome all the participants from india and abroad and uh, hope it will be a very fruitful webinar for all of you especially the students who were in literature and uh, hope the students uh, would be encouraged to take up the research work in this line of literature with that i uh, i wind up my welcome speech uh, please enjoy the seminar thank you very much and hand over the microphone to dr saitaka thank you dr bhattacharya for offering florid tribute to dr birendra kumar bhattacharya on behalf of all of us and we are now going to the business session of this webinar we have with us professor nagen saikya sir who is an erudite scholar of indology and assamology and a creative writer of his repute he was a former president of former professor of sahitya rathi lakshminat bejburwa chair of dibrugarh university and also former president of 
the Sahitya Sabha, the apex literary body of Assam. He was a close associate of, associate of late Birendra Kumar Bhattacharya for a long time. And therefore, he has some personal experiences with Dr. Bhattacharya. May I now request Professor Saikya sir to kindly deliver his speech on personal reminiscence of Birendra Kumar Bhattacharya. Sorry, yes, sir, please. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, you are audible. Yeah, she is the, ah, okay. yeah, she is the director of the SAC Cultural Center. Welcome, madam. Hi, welcome. Thank you so much for inviting. Okay. Professor Manatunga wanted me to join your meeting. That's a prestige. Welcome, madam. Yeah. Now, Professor Nagan Sekhya sir will offer his speech. Please, Sekhya. I'm on my way home. So I was having my face mask too. So I guess that is not audible. It's not audible now. You are audible, but Professor okay. Saikya is not audible. Oh. Uh, please unmute. Please unmute the voice. No, sir. No, you are not audible, sir. You, your voice is not coming, sir. May, may I request Mandira Madam, who is associating Saikya sir, to kindly unmute the voice. Yes. Okay, I think, I think. Am I now audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please. Please. Sir. Okay. Thank you. Please sir. start from the starting set. I pay my heartfelt tribute in memory of Dr. Vyendra Kumar Bhattaria. And I shall speak a few words in his memory, especially my feeling about his personality. I heard the name of Birendra Kumar Bhattacharya during my school days, when he became the editor of the Ram Hill, the magazine, literary magazine, harbinger of modernity into SMS literature. Later on, he edited another weekly Navajuk that magazine also put some mark in the history of Samia literature. I was a subscriber of Ram Dhenu, uh, since I was a student of class eight. And therefore, Briandra Kumar Bhattacharya's name and his writings became very much, I mean, uh, known to me. But as a student of class eight or nine, it was difficult for me to go through all those, I mean, serious articles. But yet, I, say, I tried my best. I have a memory of uh, the Ram Dhenu. Especially in this magazine, a drama written by Ananda Sarbathaku, Dr. Ananda Sarbathaku, it was serialized in the Ramhin. And after that, when it became complete, I collected all the issues and I, I mean, wrote it down with my hand to dramatize the whole uh, I mean, subject. In our videos, we arranged it, and drama, it was named Matir Moram, Love of the Story. Matir Moram was this, and that was the first I mean, socio-economic drama 
that was staged in our village. And uh, then I saw him for the first time in the year 1958 when I was a student of JB College. Uh, just at the same time, I want to uh, say that Madame Bhattasarjaya, she was my classmate in the college. But at that time, I didn't know that uh, they were going to be get married. At that time, I felt that Gilendra Kumar Bhattasarjaya is a very serious man in his mood, but at the same time, very much communicable and simple. It affected me to his personality. It was the first time that I felt that I was affected by his personality. I feel he was out and out a humanist. No difference of caste, creed, religion, language. He maintained. He was free from all these, above all these differences. Even he was above political differences also. Nowadays, we see that in politics, the opposition are very much, I mean, enemy can the other parties. But at that time, I saw, I felt that Dhrindra Kumar Patasarjo was very much, I mean, uh, that we should be, we should be take differences very gravely. Rather, as a human being, we should uh, treat all the persons as a human being we should treat. That was his philosophy, and it affected me very much. Therefore, I have said that he was out and out a humanist. And moreover, I said that. Uh, more, moreover, I have seen that he was very much committed to the He was. He was attached to Gandhiji as well as. Well as Guhiyaism, if you can, if we, if we can call it Guhiyaism, was very much close to Gandhiism and also the philosophy of Guhiyaism. And he decided from the time frame of the people. But Please, 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 Virendra Kumar Bhattasarji, he later on, he mustered in SMS literature and he also, did, he also did his PhD on humorous writings in SMS literature. But what always attracted Virendra Kumar Bhattasarji to me was his simplicity. When he came to the Brugger, we had the opportunity to get him as our guest in our small hut. But he was always very much dear to us, and he took everything very, uh, I mean, dearly, addressed everything, everybody very openly, and we were very much happy to get him as our guest in our home. But what we talked, it is important to say that we didn't talk about our family matters. 
Virendra always talked about the socio political and socio economic Mediterranean subjects, and he, uh, I mean, speak out, spoke out his impression, his thoughts, his feelings about these uh, issues. And I, I am very much uh, happy that I had the chance to talk with Virendra Kumar Bhattacharya very much openly in our household. Later on, when I became very much close to Asam Saito Sabha, at that time I have got Virendra Kumar Bhattacharya as my elder brother. That I will say, therefore, I always, I didn't call him Char or something like that. I always call him Virenda. And Virenda, he was very much, very much serious about the socio-economic position of the state of Assam. And he said that if we don't take serious action to, I mean, uh, to make it right, to take the state into the right path, then we shall be lagging behind. He later on he edited Mabajuk, which had also, I mean, uh, gave harvest to the Assamese literatures and literature even literacy, because he was the man who always tried to bring the people to the community to make the state a harmonious, harmonious state in our uh, in the present time. He was very much looking forward for the development of the state. I feel that when the Assam movement took place, he supported the main issue of the I mean, uh, movement, but he discarded violence. Some sort of violence took place at that time, and it was not because of the I mean, persons, not because of the leaders of the movement, but because of the anti-forces. And Virendra Kumar Bhattacharya was very much upset. When in 1984, I, I mean 1984, yes, 19, uh, 1984, yes, 84, I think, he became the president of the Assam Society. I shall have to speak it out that prior to that, prior to two years back, his name was in the panel of was presidency. But in the same year, the same year, Sitana Brahma Sodhuri's name was also there. When Virendra knew it, he immediately withdrew his name for Sitana Brahma Sodhuri. I think nobody would do that. The Socialist Party of Sam, they persuaded Virendra Kumar Bhattacharya to go to the parliament from their party. But Virenda refused to go to parliament. He said that I shall hide from, not from inside, but from outside. And he fought for the people, for the society, and for the cause of the lakhs and lakhs of people of Assam, inhibited in Islam. I must say, that his vocabulary that he used in his novels and his, I mean, short stories, it shows how much he was near to the people. I should also say one more thing about his uh, personality, that is his That is his love for the 
children. Well, he had lots of visions with children. In some meetings, I, when I was with him, I saw, I felt that when he saw a little girl or a little boy with a smiling face, his face also became very much lighted and, and, and enlightened. He said that he actually very much happy to see the happy faces, smiling faces of the children. So this man, he loved people, he loved irrespective of their caste, creed, religion, language, and even political differences. He loved all men. And therefore, I always say that he was out and out a humanist. When he became the uh, vice president of the academy, I congratulated Virenda. He said that, no, it is not a very high job that I am taking, but I shall have to do as I can do for the betterment of the organization. Later on, when his name was, I mean, proposed for the presidency. At that time, I was in Delhi. And he said, should I contest? If I contest, shall I, should I go to people, should I go to the members to ask me, ask them for what? I shall not go. I can't and appeal, I can't request anybody to vote for me. But he was elected at that time. I was in Delhi at that time, and I was the uh, president of the Assam Association Delhi. I immediately on the same night when the result was out, I organized a meeting in the Assam Bhavan, where uh, say, academy's uh, secretary at that time, Nowadays, I sometimes have forget the names or words. Uh, he came, and we had a very hard gathering in the Assam Bhavan at that night. Later on, prior to that, he was given the I mean, uh, award at the Gandhi Award. Somebody says that at that time, the social, socialist party was in Assam, and therefore it was very much, uh, it was, uh, somebody said in that way, criticized in that way, that it was very much easy to get, a, uh, get an award. I fought against it. I wrote letters. I said that if somebody feel held in that way, he had no idea about being the poor participants. Personality. I must say that when he was the president of the Academy, at that time a proposal came from the central government that the president of the Academy would be nominated, nominated by uh, the president of India, and his place will be just like a uh, Cabinet Minister, right? No, not Cabinet Minister, Rajik Mantri, State Minister. I think the Litkola Academy and uh, Sangit Nadok Academy, both the academies, general councils, they accepted it. But when the proposal was placed before the general council, Miranda, who was the president of the academy at that time, he heard the uh, speeches of the members of the general council, and most of the members they supported that. Yes, that's a very good suggestion that academy presidents should be nominated by the uh, Rashtrapati, and he would be taken. He would be taken as. A minister of state, that I mean, place he will get. But 
after hearing the i mean uh, comments and speeches of the members miranda said that in democracy the majority's voice will have to be honored i honor your voice but at the same time i feel that if it is made a government organization just like a government organization the autonomy that the academy is enjoying there will be no place of enjoying i mean autonomy in the academy's life therefore myself i cannot accept this proposal and i want to resign from the post of um, president president of the academy having heard the mind of the president all the members they have said that you no know, let us maintain the economy and let us uh, write to the government that right to academy desires to maintain its autonomy otherwise it would have been just like a common department i think it is one of the most important point that he raised and that he i mean uh, proved to be i mean very right decision at the right time when the kumar patel sir ji i knew him from other angles also once his novel mitun uh, was critically analyzed by one person in assam and he told me on that day he was in thas in a war home he told me that he, i want to write something about it because the person who is writing this article he couldn't feel my feeling and therefore he has written some uh, words that are not acceptable for me then i have said that on that day he was very much pattern i said that no let him do that but you shouldn't i mean reply to this writing he said he that after what she said you suggested very right i should be clear what about it people feel let them speak out and what about i feel i should speak out in not in a way to fight against somebody but in a way to make myself clear so this man he maintain the solidarity always and he i have seen that how uh, you are very much serious and simple at the same time during the time of assam movement he was he became the president of some side association and i was his general secretary he proposed that let us go and see the affected areas in a car vinda myself and the secretary of borough side association of that time we went to the north bank of brahmaputra and we have seen how the even not only the houses but also the trees were burnt down or half burnt the little not trees were standing just like half burnt men he feel he say that don't you feel that these trees are very much like half burnt men he went to the we went to the borough areas also and the other areas too and we have seen how the violence could make men not only human being but also non human beings in biranda he proposed one thing that 
Saito Sabha should not depend on government, but it should have a, uh, I mean, trust of its own. He named it Asam Saito, Hom Saito Sabha, Zatio Nyak Uji. Asam Saito Sabha, National Trust Fund. And I, at this moment, I memorize that in 1882, Hamsandra Bolwa, who was the uh, first grammarian, Assamese grammarian, and also the uh, maker of Assamese dictionary, Hempo, he proposed at that time. I have told Virenda that what you are telling today, suggesting today, it was suggested 100 years back by Hamsan Dabulwa, the great grammarian. So I feel uh, very much his absence in, in our time. I hope that his, I mean, Words and his words will remain always in our memory, and it will help the people of the country to know this gentleman, to know this, know his personality. I once again pay my tribute in memory of that. Thank you, Swagya yes, sir. It is indeed a matter of great. Privilege to listen to Sakya sir, who was closely associated with Dr. Birendra Kumar Bhattacharya. And we have with us another renowned scholar, uh, Professor Hamar Dutti uh, as one of our panelists today. So, sir, uh, you know that uh, so sir uh, is the former Vice Chancellor of Gohati University, former Pro Vice Chancellor of Tejpur University, and presently, the Vice Chancellor of Downtown University. All of us know that Dr. Birendra Kumar Bhattacharya has composed 15 novels and he has documented all the social events through which he has passed his life. And therefore, uh, the critics say is that without having any scientific insight towards the social phenomena, nobody can write, nobody can document uh, in such a manner uh, through the creative writings uh, like novels. Uh, Professor Choudhury sir will highlight in this very interesting topic, scientific quest of Dr. Virendra Kumar Bhattacharya. Choudhury sir, please. Professor Amarduti Sodri sir, he is also a renowned personality of the cultural life of Assam and a whole northeastern part. May I now request Professor Sodri sir to kindly deliver his speech. Sodri sir, you are not audible, sir. Sodri sir, you are not audible, sir. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, please. I, I, yeah, now audible, sir. Please. Yeah. I'm enormously honored to pay tribute to one of the icons of our time, Dr. Virendra Kumar Bhattacharya. I had the fortune of staying in Italy for a couple of years in a place which was very close to Palazzo Vecchio and near which we had all the creations of the different structures of Michelangelo and the paintings of Leonardo Vinci. And the, there was so much, we, we could see there, there's so much of explosion of creativity during the Renaissance time. And I also had the fortune of listening to Dario Fo, the Nobel winning play, playwright, who wrote, who told us that uh, it was because of the different ideas, variety of ideas that used to cross through the Silk Route, that the ideas of Renaissance slowly took its firm ground. 
and the it was because of this variety of ideas that led to the flowering of the creativity of Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci. If we carry on in the same line, we find that Dr. Virendra Kumar Bhattacharya too was a truly Renaissance man in the sense that he had the capacity to turn all the different ideas coming from different areas. Um, we all know that C.P. Snow used to talk about the apartheid between arts, science and arts, that the ideas of arts do not cross over to science and uh, that of uh, science do not cross over to uh, arts. That was his complaint. But I could see in Dr. Virendra Kumar with Bhattacharya that it was a, there I found a person who had all the curiosities for different topics, different ideas. And he often used to say that problems in life do not come as arts or science. It comes as a combination of all. We need to penetrate into layers and layers inside these different topics. That was his approach. And, and I, we could see that he's a man of ideas, totally a man of ideas, pure ideas, which he wanted to translate into action. And uh, he could also push ideas into other people, create, make them creative, make them think about it, and come out with their creativity. I still remember when I was in class, uh, first two years of my uh, schooling, I, uh, my father gifted me with a poem called Morlaksha, Morlaksha, meaning my aim. And uh, it spoke about a child being, uh, who wants to be like Gandhiji or Jawaharlal Nehru, then Jai Prakash, Subhash Chandra Bose, all these. And I used to recite this poem very often. And when Dr. Virendra Kumar Bhattacharji, who was very close to my father, and because of the, they both shared socialist ideas, and also because they shared literary values, same literary values. So they used to meet often in our household. And once when he came, my father asked me to recite in front of him. I recited. Of course, just like others, he also appreciated my recitation. But then he posed me a question. He said that you talked about being like Gandhiji, like Subhash Chandra Bosu, like Jawaharlal Nehru, like Jai Prakash Narayan, but what do you really want to be? That was a question that set me thinking. And uh, believe me, I was not a very bright student at the time. But then this was such a question that it got so interpenetrated with my life that I had to think it over and over again and come to certain conclusion. And I was told by many writers of Ram Denu and Navajugira that they were also simultaneously provoked into thinking like this. When I was in class, that was the first question in, uh, posed to me. Then when I was in class eight, he had a very interesting question for me. Uh, he came to, and uh, one of his days, days, he came to meet my father and he asked me again that, uh, is there a similarity in the chemistry of life in plants and that in, and the life that we have? Is there a simi similarity in the chemistry or are we similar to plants? Do we have some sort of affinity to plants? Because he used, he, his first words were, uh, we know that Jagdish Chandra Bosch has found that there's life in plants. But then is there a similarity between life in plants and that in us? That was the question. Of course, as a student of class eight, I could not answer it. And I had to struggle for many, many years to come out with an answer. Later on, I found the answer. It was, it was very much in the books. It's not that I invented or discovered it. It was very much in the books. We know that in uh, the, uh, the, the, the thing that gives energy to plants is chlorophyll. And inside chlorophyll, there's a molecule called porphyrin. And this porphyrin has in its center a molecule of magnesium that gives its 
color, the green color is because of this magnesium molecule. Similarly, in our life also, we have, we know that we, we are given energy by hemoglobin. And in the hemoglobin, also there is porphyrin. And in the porphyrin, there is uh, a molecule, uh, this porphyrin molecule, inside that there is an atom of iron. That is the only difference between the uh, chemistry of life in plants and that in our human beings. So, so much of affinity. So when uh, Sankaradevi used to sing the Jata Jiva Jangama Kita Patangama Aganaga Yoga Terikaya, that was a kind of thing that uh, that used to say, the, the echo the same feeling that there was similarity between plants and uh, our lives too. So when I could finally answer these two, uh, Dr. Virendra Kumar Bhattacharya, uh, that was around when I was in uh, just entered into college. There was an enigmatic smile in his face. He was so happy. And but through his face, I could un understand. I, I thought that he would not quite understand the, uh, the, the the thing that I was trying to speak about. But then he could understand it. And in fact, it appeared to me that he knew it. So I asked him. You probably knew it, no? You asked me just to find out whether I knew it or not. That indeed was his attempt. He himself told that that indeed was the attempt, so as to provoke thinking in me, so as to provoke a kind of search, scientific search within me. So that was the thing. And then, 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 then he told that in time I will ask you the third question. That was very interesting. And uh, so uh, when I was in, uh, I was about to go to Delhi University for my uh, master's in physics, the day before we had some, uh, some of the friends of the family and some friends of my father used to have come uh, to our house. And Dr. Virendra Bhattacharya also came along with his wife, I still remember. And then he asked me, so now is the time for the third question. Uh, he asked me, this is the, uh, there, there are two parts to this question. Are we really related in, uh, when we speak about the humankind, that we are all related, that we are Vasudaiva Kutumbakam, that we are a family, humankind is a family. Is it really true also from the scientific perspective? And the second question related to this was, is diversity a scientific platform? Is, is it a scientific platform for creativity? The first part of it was is, uh, when I uh, started to uh, mine for it, to find out the answer for the first part. It was not very difficult. We found that, uh, of course, all life forms have come from some distant galaxy, some distant stars. And our molecules are all together. That's why the molecules that constitute my body and your body are all together. And that way, we are all same. So there is a kind of really the human kind is related, if you want to say. The second part of the question was relatively tough. So is diversity. Similarly, in, phys in, in science, really, we talk about what is known as symmetry. Symmetry means everything is more or less the same. And that is what we mean in uh, science. So initially, so for that, to find out that answer, I had to go back to the uh, starting of our universe. Initially, there was only quantum vibrations, they say. Nothing else was there. Not even time or place, nothing was there. Everything was concentrated at a point. And then suddenly there was a big bang and uh, initial moments there was symmetry everywhere everywhere all sides it looks similar but then the nature had a different idea suddenly the symmetry was broken and that's why the from energy particles were created particles were created then from particles we had matter then matter from matter we had big planets and stars and then the life forms came so all of these came in, which is, so then, then came life forms and biodiversity, 
and also cultural diversity. So the present world, which is we can, uh, the, which, which you can say is very creative because it is sustaining in life in different forms, sustaining li creative lives in different forms. So we we could say that diversity is a is a scientific concept also. It comes from the scientific concepts of our very origin. And uh, uh, later on, when uh, I, I got my master's in physics from uh, Delhi University and we came, I came back, the very day I came back to Guwahati, I went to his house uh, and to give this answer. Then uh, I, I told him that you probably know even this answer. He said, I know part of this answer, not fully. So this, this was the answer we shared. And then he told me his final vision. That, Do you know why I asked you to find out this? I said, no, I have no idea. Then he said that I always talk about going for a world where there will be, where no people will have not roofs. They will have, everyone will have roofs on their head. Everybody will have food in their plate. Everybody will have clean water. Everybody will have uh, provisions for education and health. This is my vision. And if that is true, and if the, we are all related, all the in, uh, entire humankind is related, and if the, sust the diversity is to be sustained, this is the only way we can sustain it. So that is my vision of life. So. I could see the, the man in totality that day. Uh, I still remember that day, as I, I, I told you that I came back from Delhi uh, with my masters, and he said that these are the ideas we like you to grow. So I could see immediately the, the way he provokes thinking in persons. It was so, I mean, uh, the question that he posed, these three questions almost changed the entire vision of my life. I, I, I admit here, in, the, in, uh, in front of all uh, August audience, August audience. And uh, so this is the type of man, I mean, pure man of ideas who could inspire ideas, inspire other people with his ideas. So such sort of a person was Dr. Virendra Kumar Bhattacharya. And uh, uh, probably, I still feel probably we could not appreciate his talent the way it was at his time. There is still time to think, have a revisit his talent, his uh, genius, and the kind of person that was Dr. Virendra Kumar Bhattacharya. I, and I earnestly believe that the researchers of this day will take pains to find out the best that was in this simple, very humble man otherwise. But then we had a very high vision of the world, but a very simple life, yet had this high vision of having everyone happy. That was his philosophy. And that was for his idea of, so that is why how his socialist ideas flowered. So on this uh, 23rd day of that great visionary, I once again pay my visit to that person. And I'm very honored to be a part of this entire process. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sudhuri, sir, for your valuable speech. We have uh, got the opportunity to listen to you about uh, the scientific quest of Dr. BKB through different experiences you have gathered with, with the interactions with Virendra Bhagavatasharya. And uh, may I now, uh, we, we, all of us know that Dr. Uh, Bhattacharya has served the highest academy of literature of the nation, Sahitya Academy as its vice president and president. So we have with us Dr. K. Srinivasa Rao, the secretary of Sahitya Academy. And we are really grateful to Dr. Rao for participating in this webinar as one of our panelists. Dr. Rao is a very dynamic leader of Sahitya Academy under whose leadership Sahitya Academy has got a different momentum. Uh, so we are really grateful to Dr. Rao, and may I now request Dr. Rao to speak a few words on Sahitya Academy and Dr. Bhirendra Kumar Bhattacharya. Yeah, the, thank you, Professor Satikam, um, respected Professor Nagin Saikyaji, 
and friends uh, after this uh, two great scholars speeches i am little bit hesitant particularly this nagin saikyaji's uh, personal anecdotes and uh, very scholarly lecture by professor amar jyoti choudhary ji i am little bit hesitant to speak on this occasion but still uh, before going any further first let me pay my respects to uh, professor birendra kumar bhattacharya ji uh, on the occasion of this 23rd day the anniversary and also uh, uh, today uh, i came to know that uh, professor amresh datta ji renowned uh, scholar and a former uh, chief editor of encyclopedia of indian literature and again he is from dibrugarh who is 102 years old he passed away in the morning so my uh, respects on this occasion uh, i hope all of you are fine and uh, your near and dear ones are safe and healthy and as we all know uh, health is a wealth is one cliched and proverbial expression cannot be cliched and understand more now than at any other moment uh, again before going further i would like to thank dr birendra kumar bhattacharya memorial trust for giving me this opportunity to talk to you on this occasion of his 23rd death anniversary uh, dr birendra kumar bhattacharya was the president of sahitya academy from 1988 to 1992 but all my personal interactions with him and learning from him happened only from 1994 you will be surprised to know about this he was president up to 1992 but my interactions and personally uh, associating with him from 1994 onwards when i moved from bombay to delhi in 1993 i was assisting him personally many a times whenever he is in delhi in connection with uh, jnan peet selection committee meetings and also on the way to kurukshetra university where he was ram manohar lohia chair first time i saw him uh, was uh, in march 1988 he was chairing a selection committee when i appeared for a for an interview to a small position in academy's mumbai regional office at that time he was a president and he has taken my interview at that time and i applied for a small position in the academy and uh, today i'm feeling uh, proud that uh, such a great personality has interviewed me at that time uh, so my association i can claim the day one my entry in the academy not from 1994 though i met and used to be and he was a towering literary personality a gigantic figure in the worlds of letters plays and socialism yet he was a very kind and passionate person and he never exhibited any distinction of human beings based on the hierarchy or caste or color or gender or nationality he was not only a writer poet and a fine human being he was also a very good administrator he stints at various institutions including the presidency at sahitya academy or testimony to this fact and during his uh, stint as the president of sahitya academy he commanded respect of all not in the dictatorial style but out of sheer accomplishment and stature as a writer and scholar and his loving and down to earth to approach to human beings and issues at hand it was during his stint that sahitya academy's programs got an enormous boost visibility and attention that they deserved if his revamp of samvatsar lecture series that is very prestigious series we have by streamlining the choice of topics and speakers showed his acumen and scholarship then his introduction of men and books platform nowadays it is known as a people and books is the testimony to his ability to think out of box even within the government setup is uh, uh, dr birendra kumar bhattacharya's presidency during that time we introduced this people and books in which dr karan singh so uh, Uh, many great personalities have taken part and he also gave a fill up to academy's prestigious makers of indian literature series by engaging all the language advisory boards and ensured that best of indian literature is carried to all the regions and languages as a person bhattacharya was a simple person simple living high thinking was his characteristic traits and bhattacharya was a thoughtful person simple living i would like to quote one example here he used to travel by 
state transport bus from Delhi to Kurukshetra. Many a times I accompanied him with uh, Madam Mrs. Bhattacharji in auto rickshaw from his guest house to bus stand. This is his simplicity. It is these traits that attracted me to him, even though I was acutely aware of the fact that Virendra Kumar Bhattacharya was a multifarious personality. Whatever I learned from Dr. Bhattacharyji at that time has been etched in my brain and soul and has stood with me in good and testing times till now. I am sure this will remain with me till I breathe lost. This is one reason why immediately I said yes to my friend Professor Satyakamji when he contacted me to uh, take part in today's program, though I am not an authority on Dr. Bhattacharya. Dr. Virendra Kumar Bhattacharya was a great poet, short story writer, dramatist, novelist, biographer, translator, lyricist, critic, teacher, and a good journalist, which we all know. At times, some people hasten to categorize him as a socialist thinker or scholar without realizing here was the personality who defied all categorization. Without doubt, socialist philosophies attracted him and influenced him Im immensely, but that very attraction and influence made him to grow beyond these philosophies. All literature is nothing capturing, reflecting and storing reality, physical or outward and inner or psychological. All human activity is nothing but sharing of stories at one level, especially literature, whether the genre is a poetry or novel or short story or a criticism or playwright, playwriting. Dr. Birendra Kumar Bhattacharya was a storyteller par excellence, first and foremost. Till his last moment, he remained a great storyteller. It is this ability that helped him to cross the human-made barriers so easily, while many intellectual giants struggled even at much lesser level. For this, I would like to recall Dr. Prabhakar Machwe's understanding and depiction. Dr. Prabhakar Machwe, in his essay entitled, The Ever-Smiling Cascade from Kamru, as said about Dr. Birendra Kumar Bhattacharya. I quote, Yet he never losses, uh, loses his grip on the tear, reader's credibility. Herein lies the excellence of Dr. Birendra Kumar as a storyteller and a novelist who will be remembered for long and not just read and forgotten, unquote. Some even described his stories were idealistic in nature and goal forgetting. All his stories are taken from and deal with everyday happenings in life. He had a vast mind capable of grand imageries and so idealism was never beyond his reach. But he was a humanist and existentialist in thought and conviction. That is the sole reason why he put human beings at the heart or center of all his works. The freedom struggle of India, Assam's contribution towards the independence, exploitation of the Indians by the ruling British, the socio-economic condition of the rural communities of India in general, and Northeast especially, the real picture of the tea gardens of Assam, the travels of ordinary daily wage laborers, straining relationships, all these and all other everyday occurrences of ordinary people have been captured and portrayed in his verse and high imaginative flavor of the novelist was just an aid and nothing more. He wrote two dozen novels and I am not going to not even mention all the names. I am just going to mention two of his greatest works to drive home my point and as briefly as possible. The Aryangam is the depiction of the Naga society, their customs and traditions, beliefs and superstitions, and it is a story of Naga people and their lives and not some imagination. And Mrityanjaya, as uh, our Nagan Saikyasar has mentioned, is the capturing of sacrifices and thought processes of ordinary Assamese people in the period leading up to Indian independence, even while highlighting the conflict of those people at the fulfillment of their actions.
पोटले होते दिस नॉवेल डिपिक्ट्स अ क्लियर पिक्चर ऑफ द स्ट्रगल एंड कमिटमेंट्स ऑफ असमीस पीपल इन 1942 अगेंस्ट ब्रिटिश रूल एंड साहित्य एकेडमी हैज गॉट ट्रांसलेटेड दिस मृत्युंजय इनटू मेनी आवर एरियंगम इनटू मेनी इंडियन लैंग्वेजेस इंक्लूडिंग माय ओन मदर टंग तेलुगु एंड ही वाज आल्सो अ ग्रेट प्लेराइट एंड ट्रांसलेटर एज अ ड्रामेटिस्ट एंड एज अ ट्रांसलेटर भट्टाचार्य कंट्रीब्यूशन towards the field of assamese literature in significant and he was also an excellent traveler writer and a biographer of high quality and bhattacharya's biographical books upon sri arvindo vidyasagar etc were very significant moreover he wrote more than 2000 articles regarding literature culture politics religion and some contemporary issues very poignantly and those were scattered in various newspapers and magazines and today more than ever before the world needs multifaceted personalities like dr gendra kumar bhattacharya for his scholarship but also for his love and humanism these are the times when the world is fast losing its human side and a dose of dr gendra kumar bhattacharya would do more than a mere help so my sincere thought at this moment is dr birendra kumar bhattacharya's works get translated in more languages around the world and um, about to sahitya academy's uh, his association particularly uh, president chi and how he has maintained the autonomy uh, uh, dr nagin saikya sir has already touched upon uh, and uh, i should not touch those areas uh, sitting in this seat so uh, i once again i'm thankful to every one of you particularly dipankar ji and uh, professor satyakam ji thank you thank you thank dr you. rao uh, dr rao has uh, highlighted not only the contributions of dr brindu kumar bhattacharya towards sahitya academy but also he has highlighted on the works of uh, dr brindu kumar bhattacharya he has critically analyzed and expressed his views on the works of Mirindu Kumar Bhattacharya. We are really thankful to Dr. Rao for his erudite his speech. And may I now uh, request one another participant of uh, our today's webinar, who is from Sri Lanka. All of us know that uh, Dr. Mirindu Kumar Bhattacharya was not only a storyteller, but was uh, he was also a prominent poet of his age and uh, his poem his poems were highly praised by the critics and uh, of that time and also it is it is uh, considered as significant poems of that age of uh, of the second half of last century of indian literature of assamese language and now uh, our invited speaker from sri lanka who is a who is professor onura maratunga he is a senior professor in the department of archaeology faculty of social sciences university of, university of kalania uh, he is a prominent scholar of uh, his own repute uh, his research interest is on archaeological theory history of archaeology locational archaeology collapse of civilization and south asia he has nine books on his credit and he has also edited 18 very important volumes he has contributed several numbers of research papers and research research based articles to several national and international journals uh professor manathunga will uh, highlight on the some allied areas related to the works of uh, dr brendu kumarasalya professor maratunga will deliver the special speech of today's webinar that will be on importance of preservation of poetic heritage professor maratunga please professor maratunga you are not audible please unmute Please unmute Professor okay. Manatunga. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Fine. You? Thank you. Okay. Thank you yes. very much, Professor Satya Kam. And I am very much honored and very happy to address today 
and i would like to thank for inviting me to dr deepankar bhattacharya on behalf of the dr birendra kumar bhattacharya trust and also i would like to thank my very good friend geetika tente geetika talutka from assam she is a photojournalist i think she uh, connected me with the bhattacharya trust and i would like to thank her also and today i would like to uh, give a little bit on some personal things also because i have some kind of relationship with assam i have assamese friends since 1986 professor dilip mehdi is a very good friend of mine we were together at the deccan college pune at that time and also one of the assamese lady dr geetanjali goswami she is now in sri lanka she is a very good friend of mine and himanshu uh, hiramai das gogbi gogbi she is also a good friend of mine and once i visited assam gauhati in i think in 2017 or 2018 Uh, for the south asian archaeology conference uh, on the invitation of the directorate of archaeology and i would like to thank dr dp rekha kohli and chabina hasim and also professor mini bhattacharya for this invitation and also i addressed uh, at cotton university once uh, for for that i have been invited by majuli to see uh, majul hasarika is a prehistorian and at that time i have been invited by the jain association of gauhati so i am very happy to be in gauhati for few days and uh, therefore i have lots of friends in uh, assam now and uh, in fact thereafter i organized an international conference in sri lanka on assamese culture I think this is the first that type of conference in Sri Lanka or NASA. I don't know whether there are that type of com- congress conferences in uh, elsewhere in the world, maybe in the Western countries, but this may be the first time in Sri Lanka or possibly and also most probably in some other South Asian countries also. And I'm very happy because uh, at that time we came to know that the tea plantation. of sri lanka was brought from assam to sri lanka was tea is one of the major export item of sri lanka and is a part of our culture and uh, you know about ceylon tea sri lanka is ceylon at that time so we still we call it ceylon tea and therefore we owe to assam in some extent uh, not only that and i have seen some similarities between assam and sri lanka it's very greenery both countries and uh, also people are also very much similar and very friendly so assam i can say some kind of my second home is like that okay now i would like to say why i am talking on poetry today uh, po- uh, poetry is also in some extent uh, associated with me because uh, i am basically i am an archaeologist but uh, at the same time i write poems also and i have already published four antho- anthologies of poems and still writing some uh, more poems a few of them have been translated into english and published uh, in the uh, at the uh, amravati film festival in vijayawada and i think i have seen uh, lots of assamese poem also there in that uh, volume Uh, for that also i would like to thank one of my sms friend dr geetanjali goswami she introduced me to this uh, amravati film festival so today i am going to talk on uh, poems therefore because i uh, i am uh, i don't write novels or short stories or some other writings but little bit i have some associated with poems therefore uh, i would like to talk on how to preserve poems and what what is the importance of preserving poems uh, and i think it's very much related to dr bhattacharya also uh, birendra kumar bhattacharya i just went through his website his trust website and there i have seen he has written lots of poems and uh, lots of songs uh, and uh, so therefore 
talking about poems is also related to him and it's a tribute to him and re i am really honored to do some kind of uh, this much uh, little thing even this much little thing in honor of a great personality like uh, bk bhattacharya uh, so you you all know what's the importance of poems so i don't want to say what's the importance of poems but i would like to draw your attention into protecting of poems to protect poems what we have to do because at, at this time poems has not have that much attraction as it was 20 or 30 years before at that time everybody uh, recite poems and also read poems and there were lots of poetry sub been published but now it is diminished in uh, due to the popularity of music and so on and also and also people are not reading that much nowadays and whatever the reasons poems are not that much uh, popular as it was in uh, two or three decades before but poems are very important not only as the uh, form of art but also a means of history or a part of the heritage we you know that poem is not only an artistic work but it it, it has a lots of other other things can be gained through analyzing poems we can study history we can study culture we can study environment and everything through poems and poems are actually truth they are not only uh, compiled or not, not only creative work. this creation is also given the truth truth image of people so therefore as an archaeologist i am very much interested on ancient poem yes. and do you know i i i'll take uh, i'm not taking your time that much uh, and you know about the importance of poem and what we do for to preserve them for that i think we have to do one thing is that we have to open up ex exclusive libraries for poems because that kind of libraries are in the western world if you go to england you can see the national poetry library in london that is very famous there in london and throughout england and this library has more than 30000 books on poetry and there are a lot and the building itself is considered as one of the best library buildings in the world and also one of the best 100 buildings of the modern period so it means they have given a big recognition for poetry and this poetry center is very active center so there are poetry is from 1912 up to present they are they preserve there and people go there and recite them read them and there are some workshops are being conducted there uh, for children for elders and for the poets and everybody for common people are coming there so this kind of poetry like library i think we should have uh, established in our countries and our regions also and there is the same type of poetry library in scotland that's also very famous one in america also uh, there is one in new, uh, new york it's called the poetry museum actually yeah, it's like library but they call it a museum because they wanted to preserve poems therefore uh, they are having this poetry museum there and some poetry foundations are there and those foundations are also like museums uh, and also libraries and we also need this kind of library i as far as i know i mean two or three years before uh, some academics from delhi they attempted to establish a national poetry library in india but i don't know what's the present situation of it uh, if if it is there it's much is very good and if it is not there i think we should have established a poetry library in india and uh, we can have some more poetry libraries i think we can have one in assam assam for assam poetry i think you can have it in gulbarga university itself or somewhere else and today uh, i just before coming here i talked with this art cultural director and she is here fortunately for us and she has agreed to open up a poetry library for sak countries so that's a very good news and this uh, the credit should go to the batacharya memorial trust because thanks to this trust uh, see got interested on it 
as he's going to open it. And we just approached the director general of SAC in Kathmandu, and he is also very happy about that. And he asked us to send the proposal through the this lady director uh, of the SAC Cultural Center, one of my good friends, Professor Prishanti Narangode. So you can, we can have keep, keep contacts with her for uh, follow up this work, and that is one of the very good things we can do in future for all of us then we can join we can come there we can uh, collect our poems into one place uh, and we can have some workshops and we can have conferences on poetry and that will be a very good poetry uh, gathering uh, in uh, near future so i uh, i think professor prashanti will talk after me a little bit and uh, say what what's the plan on that and what we are going to preserve there and we, what we are going to do in this kind of poetry libraries. One thing you know that uh, we collect, we can collect books. That's true. There's no, no problem over that. But one important thing that we simply forget is that the manuscripts. See the manuscripts of books of Professor Bhatt Dr. Bhattacharya. I, I, do you have those things? I, I have seen one or two in your website and I'm sure you have collected some of them in your trust. but some other poets are poet, poet, poets are not that much uh, lucky to preserve their manuscripts i think we have to collect manuscripts manuscripts are very important the original copies they are written in their own handwriting so those manuscripts we have to collect and we have to ask them after they give, give the, them to the print, printing press for publication give us the original hand copy and we can preserve it so that's very important. And, and then we can digitalize those things. That also we can do. And the other thing is the signed copies. The, you know, as a book collector, we know that the importance of the signed copies are very high, higher than the other copies. Therefore, we would like to collect the signed copies of the authors. So that's also very important when we are talking about the uh, poem uh, libraries. And then uh, we have to collect uh, folk songs and folk uh, poems and that kind of things. Uh, they, are, they are coming down from uh, oral tradition, from generation to generation. So that type of poems also we can collect. For that, we can do a survey everywhere. We can use some undergraduates or some other people. And it's, it's not that much difficult thing to collect. But the problem is, if we don't collect those things now, they will be vanished within Few, few years and already lots a lot of poems are being obliterated and also vanished so therefore we have to take a step and collect some poems from rural areas and gather them so those are old poems and then what we are doing for the poems that we are writing now most of us write poems in the, on the facebook and some other electronic medias those are called digitally born poems but these digitally born poems has to be preserved there are some softwares to preserve those poems but uh, they are a little bit costly but what we can do is wherever we write a poem in electronic media we can send them into one of uh, one of the central place uh, something like that sark poetry library or somewhere else in future and then we can gather those poems so those things I think we can do in future to preserve poems. And so there are a lot of other things to say, but I would like to talk to you only one thing about that. See, that we know about Assam, we have heard about Assam, we love Assam, but we don't know about Assam in general. Why? None of the Assamese books have been published in Sri Lanka, in Sinhalese language. So what we can do is we can translate some of the books first we can select one, one of the bk dr bk bhattacharya's uh, short story or something like that and if you so kindly give us the english translation we can do it uh, put it into singhala we can do it and i think we should do that then only we can understand each other we have hundreds of english writers books we have hundreds of uh, best, uh, other uh, even hindi, hindi and bengali writers books but not assamese writers but we know that they have also had a great uh, literary tradition 
So the, for that, to uh, develop that and preserve that, please help us to get them translate into my own language. Then uh, your Dr. B. K. Bhattacharya and also our Professor Atyakam and all the other writers will be known to our people. So that's the best way. Ramindranath Tagore is known by everybody. It's thanks to his uh, publications in our own language. They have been pub published in our language from the 1920s. So everybody knows about Gora and other thing and this thing and because those science things are my own native language. So let's do that. We'll join. I think the Sakis they are with us. They are the big ladies with us here, a responsible lady. And we, we, we put all this idea to her and then she will uh, try to uh, operate some of them and uh, to do some work. And that's all that I have to say. Thank you very much. And thank you, uh, Dr. Deepankar Bhattacharya, for allowing me to uh, speak. And I would like, if you so kindly allow uh, Professor Mrs. Uh, Prashanti Narangar to express her views. It's up to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Manatunga. Uh, your speech has uh, encouraged us to uh, cross the limit of the geographical borders regarding spreading the feelings of the poets. And also you have highlighted some very important topics. Uh, I am remembering Gavinos, the German literary historian who says that the literature which, is, which depicts the real history of society. And you are telling that uh, the regarding preservation of the history, we'll have to preserve the poetry. This is very important. And also you have highlighted uh, some important topics regarding translation, and we can jointly walk for that. Virendra Kumar Bhattacharya Trust is here. Also, Professor Nagin Sikyasar is here. Uh, here is also uh, another very um, dynamic under dynamic leadership of uh, Professor Kandarpa Deka. Here is another trust, Professor Nagin Sikya Trust also there. Both the trust can work together to translate it to Sinhali and also uh, the proposal for establishing a poetry library in Assam. This is a very interesting and very lucrative proposal and we are ready to work on it. And I hope that Professor Narangoda will uh, allow us to work on that and both the trust can jointly work on it and we can go for that. Uh, we are very much happy that we have with us Professor Prasanti Narangoda, the Director of Sark Cultural Center. So, uh, may I request uh, Professor Narangoda to uh, offer a few lines in this auspicious occasion? And also, we hope that our association with Professor Manatunga and Professor Narangoda will be continued after this webinar. Also, Professor Prashanti, please. Professor Prashanti, please unmute your voice. Please unmute your voice, Professor Prasanti. Unmute, please. Yes, you can hear me, Raya. Yeah, okay. Okay. So thank you so much for inviting me and introducing me to this um, like uh, significant evening and the mission and vision towards restoring Professor Bhattacharya's poetry for the future. And as uh, you all told that uh, poetry is a means of expression. I think that is the most important, like uh, very significantly, the medium of expression of people unanimously comes from everybody's heart and mind and soul. And it gives us all the happiness and grievances that the world has uttered at times. So therefore restoring that kind of expressions their feelings. Culture does an immense uh, uh, kind of assistance to cope up with people's situations at times, from time to time. And it's the very much a dynamic language in the world. Therefore, as Professor Manatunga uttered very correctly, we need to 
preserve them for the future generation because that is the history that belongs to our society, that belongs to our culture. And SAC Cultural Center is there to restore, promote, and to implement events and programs to restore these cultural elements to the generations ahead. And being the director, being proposed by Professor Manatunga, and uh, being, uh, I mean, uh, required by the SAC Cultural Center, we love to provide all the facilities to establish the SAC uh, Poetry Library. In the massive building complex we are proposing and we are under construction now, it will be ready within another one or two years for the SAC uh, region as the cultural hub. So we are planning to establish that cultural hub. Within that, SAC Poetry Library will be one of it. So. I will do the best that I can do to implement and establish a South cultural uh, through the South cultural center, a poetry library that includes Ms. Bhattacharya's poetry as well, and world recognized poet uh, work in there. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. And uh, I hope we can all work together to restore this cultural Value of uh, cultural elements, which has an immense value to our society. Thank you very much, and have a good evening to you all. Thank you, Professor Prasanti. Uh, You're welcome. I, I believe that uh, today's webinar was uh, very fruitful for us uh, because we got the opportunity to listen. Uh, the scholars from different regions and who spoke from different dimensions. We, we got the opportunity to listen to Professor Nagin Sekiasar, who had uh, the close association with Dr. Dr. Kumar Bhattacharya. We got the opportunity to listen to Professor Amarjuri Shodhuri, sir, who highlighted a very interesting topic, the scientific insight of uh, Dr. Kumar Bhattacharya. And the scientific insight of a uh, writer it is very important and uh, scientific quest of a writer is very important and he has highlighted that topic in a very interesting manner and um, we got the opportunity to listen to the scholarly deliberation of the secretary of Sahitya academy mr k srinivas rao also we got the opportunity to listen uh, to good, uh, we got the opportunity to listen to Mr. Manatunga, uh, Professor Manatunga, and Professor Prasanti. This is very, uh, this was very interesting and fruitful deliberations from all the scholars. And at the end, may I request Juri Bhattacharya, the daughter of Dr. Birendra Kumar Bhattacharya, to kindly deliver the vote of thanks. Madam Juri Bhattacharya, please. Namaskar and good evening. On behalf of Birendra Kumar Bhattacharya Memorial Trust, I would like to extend my gratitude to Sahitya Academy awardee, renowned writer, and former professor of Asimit in Dibrugar University, Dr. Nagan Haikya, sir. Thank you, sir, for your valuable speech, and we are grateful to you for giving your time and kind support to us. Now I would like to thank Vice Chancellor of Downtown University, Dr. Amar Juti Sautri, sir, he is not only a renowned scientist and educationist, but also a poet, novelist, and researcher. Thank you, sir, for your mesmerizing speech, and we are honored to have your presence here. We are extremely grateful to renowned poet and archaeologist, former head of the Department of Archaeology, Kelania University, Anura Manatunga. He knows Assamese culture very well, and we visited Assam many a time. Sir, on behalf of DKB Memorial Trust, I would like to extend heartful thanks to you for giving us your precious time. You have enlightened us with your speech. I also want to thank Professor Prashanti Narayan for her excellent speech and giving her valuable time. Now, my sincere gratitude to K. Srini Basarao, he is the Secretary of Sahitya Academy, New Delhi, and also a renowned writer. Thank you, sir, for your wonderful speech and for giving your precious time to us. 
a deep gratitude to the Professor Abbasimi's Chairperson of Center for Studies in Journalism and Mass Communication in Dibrugar University, Dr. Satya Kambar Thakur. Moreover, today he has successfully conducted and moderated the international webinar on Dr. Birindra Kumar Bhattacharya, for which we are very much grateful to him. Now I would like to thank Dr. Dipankar Bhattacharya, Secretary of the Memorial Trust. Dr. Rashna Jadav, Joint Secretary of the Trust, and also the other trustees for their kind support and efforts for making the webinar successful. We are very much grateful to Armstrong for their technical support, especially to Viras Devi and Achilles. Now at last but not the least, I would like to extend my heartful thanks to those participants who attended the international webinar today from different parts of the country and abroad, and also from different places of Assam. Thank you, everybody. Have a nice day. And with this, I do be signing off. Namaskar. Thank you, Jury Madam. And with uh, this word of thanks, uh, I again offer our sincere thanks and gratitude to all of you. And I personally, I am feeling honored to getting this uh, for getting this opportunity to moderate this uh, very uh, uh, important webinar. And with this uh, few words, I declare this webinar as a close. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Keep in touch. Dandavati. Thank you very much, Dr. Anur. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll be in touch. I have already messaged you. We'll give you uh, two books immediately. Yes, please. Thank, yeah. Thank you to Prasanthi also. Especially. Thank you so much Thank, for inviting you me and giving yes. me this opportunity to share and contribute from the South Cultural Center uh, to this you, immense you can, event. You can invite them to contribute to your journal. South we journal. Can. Yeah, yeah, we can. I mean, if you can, uh, I mean, we have the names because we are going to prepare a journal, a research journal, so we can have some kind of uh, articles on Virendra Kumar Bhattacharya. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, oh <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. We'll be in touch. Yes, please. We will be in touch. It's a, it's a great meeting. We are honored with your presence. We are honored. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.